Now, in chapter 8 of Political Treaties by Baruch Spinoza, now there is something he describes, and I look around in our modern societies and I can see it, but I've never given it any thought, especially I'm talking about political arrangement. This chapter is about aristocracy, but as I've said in another video, what he describes as an aristocracy is, to, to me as a person living today and understanding democracy the way I understand it, is basically democracy. And what he describes as democracy sounds to me like an aristocracy. Uh, that's how I, I, I saw it. Now, uh, he talks about how um, the power of aristocracy is transferred and how it happens that uh, some families maintain it for a while. And he said, it is, I'll read, uh, to provide, on, on the other hand, to provide against the patrician choosing their own sons and kinsmen, and there, thereby against the right of dominion remaining in particular families is impossible and indeed absurd. Basically saying to, uh, to, to expect that certain families are not going to maintain power within a dominion over a longer period of time, like even when it's like, oh, we elect patricians. But then some families are going to have patricians in their family within their families for a long period. The dad is a patrician, the son becomes a patrician, the grandson, the great grandson, so that you find the same family have these people in position of authority or power for extended period of time, even though the law itself doesn't provide for that. And in fact, he says, as long as it's not put in express law that families should inherit family in this arrangement, then there's no problem about it. Maybe I'm not so clear about this. If you look at democracies we have today, let's say, for example, the US, which is considered like maybe the most robust existing democracy today, uh, you will realize that there are families that have maintained power, even at the national level, maybe at the state level as well. There are families that for the last 80, 100 years, they have produced uh, politicians in a certain state, or they have produced politicians who have played a major role at the national level. And that's not only in the U.S., even the other uh, countries, that often tends to be the case. But when you go to the law itself, the law doesn't say that should happen. Um, and now Baruch says you can't expect that not to happen. But as long as everybody feels that they have a, a shot at being that, then there's no problem because the multitude will be satisfied that even though the family is coming back and again and again and again, even me or my son can some point become a senator or become the president or things like that but in the real sense the people who get into this power are like particular families that control this power but it's not in the law it's outside the law and that's what Baruch, maybe i'm not doing a good job at describing how he does it but that's basically what he's describing that we shouldn't expect that families cannot hold power throughout in an aristocracy but as long as that's not what the law says because it was it will be a different thing if the law is written to say that particular families will have this power through inheritance. Then it becomes something else. But if it's just an unwritten rule, and maybe there are some advantages some families get, maybe name recognition or money, then uh, he says there's nothing wrong with that, basically. That's what he said.